Welcome back to Singapore tonight and thank you for staying with us. Researchers are looking at possible medication to treat epilepsy for people suffering from Angelman syndrome. Now the move comes after doctors here in Singapore made a breakthrough at the neuron level in those with the rare genetic disorder. Now the study was conducted by Duke NUS Medical School and the National Neuroscience Institute. And we're joined tonight by Professor Tan Ng King from National Neuroscience Institute and Associate Professor Sean J. Hyun So, senior author of the study from Duke NUS Medical School. Thank you very much, professors, for coming in. Um, Professor Tan, I want to start with you. So tell us a little bit more about Angelman syndrome its symptoms, how many people does it affect, for example, and why does it actually lead to, it says here, frequent epileptic fits? Mm -hmm. So Angelman syndrome is actually named after Dr. Henry Angelman, a, pediatric, uh, a British pediatrician, who actually coined, uh, 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 described the earlier features of this particular syndrome. It is a condition characterized by early onset uh, disease uh, and associated uh, with intellectual disability and uh, affected subjects they tend to have uh, social interaction impairment and they can have uh, seizures or epilepsy and the number of them also have poor balance and uh, they also have uh, repetitive abnormal movements what we call uh, stereotypies mm. and uh, some of them uh, do have problems with sleep and uh, some of them also have um, dysmorphic features including small head and flat back. Okay. Walk us through what this finding means in terms of, uh, you know, of, this, of this syndrome and, and in layman's terms if you could. Yes, yeah, so the brain is the most complex uh, organ, uh, arguably the most complex organ in the human body and the human uh, brain cells communicate with each other through synapses and these synapses are communicated or rather uh, the communication requires a uh, electrical currents that transmit from the neuronal cell to another neuronal cell and it involves what we call the ion voltage channel. So these are channels that pump sodium, potassium, you know, uh, uh, ions and that generate the electrical currents. So in Angelman syndrome itself, uh, we found that there is a hyperactivity that leads to an increase of these electrical currents mm. and this results in a hyperexcitability of the entire neuronal network resulting in the causation of seizures in this particular syndrome. Mm -hmm. So um, Professor Sean, the, the, that mechanism that you say is linked to a gene that's missing. What kind of problems, neurological or otherwise, will, will then you know, um, show up or surface? Uh, so, so the reason why we actually start all this is for the autism. And for autism, there are so many different genes involved. And there are a certain type of form of autism, which is what we call Angelman syndrome, that this one we know which gene does it, which is called UB3A. And this mm -hmm. gene, the product is a protein that can target other protein for degradations. But people study like how this happened and why it actually affects uh, aberrant uh, neuronal firing, why they fire like crazy, but there's no clue. So what we did is that, um, instead of using an animal model, we actually get the uh, patient cell and then from patient cell we derive into stem cell which can be any type of tissue or organ and then we grow a mini brain like this mm. and then we compare side by side with the brain that we've grown from normal people and brain grown from angioma patient and then uh, we see how they function differently and then the, that's how we actually found the uh, target which is one ion channel. Um, so now we have a target um, so then we can engage this target. So it looks like this channel is overactive. So now we also found a drug that can um, tone down this firing activity. So we can uh, basically rescue the effect of uh, mini brain level seizures. Mm, right. And then what we did, uh, we also go back to the animal model, which also have a higher tendency of seizures. And we use the same drug to rescue it. Mm. So now I think we have uh, this golden opportunity to use this for the clinic because uh, actually I heard from KK Hospital that there are 12 patients in, uh, in, the, in this hospital alone and they are all in this hospital because they have a, a treatment resistant epilepsy so the regular treatment doesn't work and it looks like we pinned down the mechanism and now we have a golden opportunity to treat those people. In the broader context itself, as Sean has mentioned, Angelman syndrome itself, some people feel that it is a subset of syndrome 
of the larger autism spectrum disorder, mm -hmm. which is a relatively common and underdiagnosed condition in Singapore. And there are a lot of what we call clinical features that overlap uh, with each other between this syndrome itself and the autism. And the fact is that we have identified a defect and then the drug that can rescue this uh, defect and uh, there is a great potential uh, to apply this uh, therapeutic option, not just to injury, mm -hmm. but to the wider uh, mm -hmm. uh, subjects with autism. Right. This all started by we're having a focus on autism and it sort of moved into uh, to seeing that it could be used in Angelman syndrome as well. When do you think drugs commercially could become available? So uh, luckily we found some candidate drug. We're already testing it mm -hmm. and we also filed the IP which is important. Okay, that's very so, important. Yeah, step. very important in Singapore. Um, so we are quite excited about it but there are some steps. So we have to show the safety first whether yes. this drug is safe and also we have to show the efficacy. But mm -hmm. if this works, this is first rational designed uh, therapy for neurological disorder. And also we can expand this same mindset. Like, uh, there are so many failure with Alzheimer's drug and Parkinson drug because A, we don't know the mechanism and mm -hmm. B, people usually use animal model to study. But now we actually use a human brain or your own, even your brain to test and tease out the mechanism and then once you find the mechanism, then we have actually treatment options. So that's what we're trying to do, and that's why we're so passionate about it, and we're very excited about it. It certainly is a very exciting development. Congratulations on this breakthrough as well. Thank you. Thank Gen you. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming into the studio to share uh, more about this uh, treatment with us. That was Professor Tan Eng King from the National Neuroscience Institute and Associate Professor Sean J. Hyunsu from Duke NUS Medical School.